Assalamualaikum and very good day. I'm Dr. Hidayah from the School of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia. First, I would like to welcome everyone to my lecture video. This video is for online learning for the course of Advanced Road Material. In this video, I will discuss on the concept of asphalt modification. So stay with me. I hope this video will benefit you and others. In this video, we will discuss on introduction of asphalt material, problems related to the conventional asphalt, and asphalt modification concept. Before we discuss on the topics highlighted, I would like to share with you an interesting online platform of massive open online courses for highway engineering. So for those who want to learn about the basic of highway engineering, you can subscribe to my MOOC course of highway engineering in openlearning.com and you will get to access to all the lecture videos including assignment and quizzes. The best part is, it's free. After you join the class, you can also download open learning apps and watch the video on your phone. It's easy, right? Once you log in, you can find all the details about the course. Can I share with others? Of course you can. All the videos that you need are in the tab of modules and activities. This is the apps where you can download it for free. Before we go into details, let's have some revision on what exactly asphalt mixture. Basically, it's an asphalt concrete which is a composite material or a mixture that consists of aggregates, binder, and filler used for constructing and maintaining roads. Asphalt binder is a semi-solid, black, brown, adhesive quality hydrocarbons which is derived from the petroleum distillation. It contains largely hydrocarbon molecules with some functional groups containing sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen. While on the chemical component, it is made of asphaltin, which is heavy oil, and maltins is the light oil that consists of saturates, aromatics, and resin. Details of this component can be found in the next slide. From the chemical point of view, all the asphalt binder can be separated into four groups which are described as sera components. Details on each component can be referred to the table. Therefore, a good understanding of these components in the conventional asphalt binder could help in the improvement of the performance through asphalt modification. Okay, now let's have some overview on the asphalt modification for road application. Due to rapid development of the highway materials industry, it is significant to improve the products offered by the suppliers. This can be done by optimizing production processes, simple and portable solution by improving the quality of the finished product for various problems. Of course, asphalt materials is one of them. So if we focus on the advancement of asphalt materials, the modification is the core business. This is to provide better materials for better solution. In this slide, for example, there's a lot of innovation through modification. Have you ever heard about the evolution from hot mix asphalt to warm mix asphalt, and then half warm mix asphalt, then finally, we have coal mix asphalt. This is due to the additives that are added to the mixture which has caused the temperature reduction in preparing asphalt mixture. And then, what about emulsion cutback which are liquid bitumen used as prime coat and tech coat and foam asphalt as stabilizing agent in base coats. How can the semi-solid bitumen can be transformed into liquid and foam for specific application? These are the product of modification. 
then how about coal in place recycling which is referred to the recycling method that recycle the reclaimed asphalt pavement and modify it with cement and emulsion and finally paved as overlay for maintenance and rehabilitation works without any application of heat next is the pmb polymer modified bitumen is one of the specially designed and engineered bitumen grids that is used in making pavements where different types of polymer are used to improve its durability to be used for heavy traffic it also has been used for many years to reduce the amount of distress and extend the service life of the hot mix asphalt pavements and also improves the life cycle cost and then glass fog it is a product of asphalt that uses crushed glass it has been used as an alternative to conventional bituminous asphalt pavement since the early 1970s generally there is about 10 to 20 percent glass in the glass fog which is contributes to the glass recycling and there are so many more products produced from the asphalt modification and used for specific application also help to solve the problem. So overall, why exactly we have to modify the conventional asphalt? As you know, the current situation of the increase in yearly traffic volume has caused so much problem and to be exact, the overloading issues and tire pressures which can cause further damage to the road, such as increase in the rutting and cracking problem. And also, in regions with extreme climatic conditions, this is not possible without asphalt binder modification. And with the climatic changes, we have a main concern over the increases in the temperature of the asphalt pavement, which affect in terms of the selection of asphalt binder. Next is to reduce the amount and severity of pavement distress where there are two major concerns which are permanent deformation and cracking problems. This can be easily observed on the road surface nowadays. Many modifiers can improve the asphalt binder's stiffness at normal surface temperatures to increase rutting resistance while decreasing its stiffness at low temperatures to improve its resistance against thermal cracking. Others, why we do the modification of the conventional asphalt is to improve the asphalt properties and pavement construction with special application, cheaper, faster, durable, and long-lasting product. And finally, by doing the modification, it could improve the material's quality with better environmental consideration such as less toxicity materials or by adopting recycling techniques. While in terms of the economic issues, the improvement of the materials could provide better solution with easier and faster technique, which could reduce the construction and maintenance cost. It is benefit both environmental and economy by recycling waste and industrial byproducts such as tires, glass, and ashes in order to gain added benefit. So when they can benefit the final product without creating an environmental liability, they are often used as additives in asphalt. Basically, any modification works are made in order to improve the properties of the conventional materials or practices. Therefore, it is relevant to discuss on what exactly the issues related to the conventional asphalt binder which are listed in the slide. First, asphalt is very sensitive to temperature changes. At high temperature, the asphalt tends to become soft and prone to rutting and shoving and softer bitumen has greater tendency to oxidize. While at low temperature, the asphalt become brittle and susceptible to disintegration and cracking. 
then ordinary bitumen is not suitable to be used in the countries which have extreme temperature. Therefore, modification of asphalt binder with various techniques is needed to solve the problem. This is significant in order to improve adhesive and cohesive properties. Then, another important properties of rheology, which is referred to the flow and deformation, as well as to reduce the potential of temperature susceptibility. Okay, this slide highlights the potential of cohesive and adhesive failure through crack initiation. Cohesive failure is characterized by the separation of molecules within the asphalt mastic and adhesive failure is related to the separation of the asphalt coating from the aggregate surface which can be related to the micro cracks initiation within the interfacial transition zone. Okay, now let's have a look on the issues related to the asphalt mixture. Issues that are related to the asphalt mixture is the functional and structural failure. There are a number of ways that a pavement section can fail and many reasons for pavement distress and failure. Previous studies define two types of pavement distress or failure. The first is the structural failure in which a collapse of the entire structure or a breakdown of one or more of the pavement components renders the pavement incapable of sustaining the load imposed on its surface. For example, the rutting problem as a result of accumulation of the permanent strain and crack that refer to the fracture under repeated stress such as fatigue cracking and low temperature cracking. The second type of failure is a functional failure. It occurs due to the pavement roughness or stone polishing that could reduce the skid resistance and unable to carry out its intended function without causing discomfort to the drivers or imposing high stresses on vehicles. The cause of these failures conditions may be due to lack of maintenance, excessive load, climatic and environmental conditions, poor drainage leading to poor subcrete conditions and disintegration of the components materials. Overloading and high tire pressures can cause either structural or functional failures. Therefore, various products have been developed including hot mix asphalt, warm mix asphalt, half warm mix asphalt, and cold mix asphalt. This is to improve the rate of production which related to the workability and also performance. Okay, this slide for example shows various problems related to asphalt mixture such as in the photos the main issue of permanent deformation, rutting, and then cracking on the road surface and finally the major problems among all is the pothole. Pothole is like never ending story. These photos describe how people around the world addressing about the issues of pothole in their own ways. This is to highlight how severe is the problem and something must be done by the local authorities and one of the alternatives is through the asphalt modification. This is an example of patching works undertaken using the conventional method of hot asphalt patching. The works is quite tedious as first you need to remove the damaged area and clean them. After that, apply a tack coat to the area and spread carefully the hot asphalt to avoid segregation of the mixture. And then the amount of mixture used should be sufficient enough to ensure that the after compaction, the patch surface will not be below the existing level. See how many steps to complete the patching works. Then few workers involved, machinery is needed, time taken, traffic diversion issue, and the need to maintain the temperature of the hot asphalt in cold weather. That's why 
the idea of modification of materials for patching is quite significant for better works quality. Let's have a look on example of a convenient method of cold patching with no heat apply, no more intensive compaction and heavy machineries, no more cutting and clearing involved, and no need for holding the traffic. It should be noted that this video is used only for the purpose of education and the credit goes to the YouTube video with the link provided in the slide. Therefore, to improve the conventional asphalt, it requires modification in order to meet the specification. Asphalt modification has been practiced for over 50 years but has received added attention in the past years. There are numerous binder additives available on the market today. The benefit of modified asphalt can only be realized by a proper selection of the modifiers. Not all modifiers are appropriate for all applications. In general, asphalt should be modified to achieve the following types of improvements. First, to provide better workability that refers to the viscosity associated with construction. This is to facilitate the pumping of liquid asphalt as well as during mixing and compaction of HMA. Then, the asphalt binder is expected to have higher stiffness at high surface temperatures to reduce the potential of rutting and shoving. Next, is to have a lower stiffness and faster relaxation at low surface temperatures in order to reduce thermal cracking or low temperature cracking, among which the relaxation time is of importance for the characterization of asphalt binder at low temperature. The physical meaning of relaxation time is the characteristic time for a system to reach a stable condition after a disturbance or in a simple words, to recover from the stress. The longer the relaxation time of asphalt binder at low temperature means longer time is required for the asphalt system to dissipate the total stress. Finally, through modification, the material is aimed to increase the addition and cohesion between the asphalt binder and aggregate in the presence of moisture. This will reduce the problem of stripping and oxidation. Through modification, the property requirements for the modification need to be understood to ensure that the materials intended for the modification 
are able to meet relevant specification using available technologies and facilities at a reasonable cost. This is important, especially in order to ensure the acceptance of the new products among the industrial player. Of course, sometimes additional technologies require some additional cost, but depends on the cost-benefit analysis. There are a lot of factors need to be considered. For example, how the material can be physically added to the asphalt mixture. And then, what are the methods, equipment, machineries involved? And the most critical is the cost involved and life cycle cost. Will the modification increases the cost of production? And then, the service life. Will the process improve the mixed properties and performance like strength and durability or is it similar performance compared to the conventional asphalt but with cost saving and probably with the benefit of recycling? Therefore, it's up to us to decide which favour the project or priority of the current industrial demand. There's a lot of things that could come across our mind before doing any process of modification such as how to mix the materials, how much, what size, in what form, whether it's a replacement or additive, it's by mass or volume, and what exactly the density difference, whether it suits for aggregate replacement or binder modification, which properties to improve, and finally, which technique should be used for the modification. Therefore, before any modification is made, all these questions should be answered first. Basically, the modification concept or technique is based on two methods. The first one is using the dry process. This is a process that first blends any material with hot aggregates prior to mixing it with asphalt binder. Normally, it's referred to aggregate replacement. The percentage of modifier added normally by mass or volume of the total aggregate content. It should be noted that the selection by volume or by mass depends on the density of the modifier. If the density of the modifier is similar to aggregate, then the replacement is preferred by mass or by volume because not much different will be in the final volume of the compacted mix. The other method is wet process that refers to the process of mixing any material with asphalt binder prior to mixing it with aggregates through addition or replacement, which known as modified asphalt binder. The percentage of modifier is normally added by mass of the total asphalt binder. Both methods have been used a lot in the asphalt modification in order to improve the properties and application. The terms used here for the modifier or replacement or substitute or use as additives. When you add the modifier as an additive, meaning that the addition process is done with maintaining the content of composition of the conventional material within the asphalt system. This could add more to the mass and volume of the existing component. Both can be done through the wet and dry processes depends on the types of modifier used. Then, we have modification through replacement. This also relevant for both wet and dry process where the modifier is added to the mix by removing the same portion of the conventional material and replace with the modifier. So what exactly the characteristic of the modifier that enables them to be used with asphalt mixture? Well, it depends on the modification technique selected and purpose of the modification. The physical of the modifier can be in a form of fine or coarse powder or pellet or in the form of liquid, such as oil-based, wax-based, or organic. 
It depends on the original formation and the process involved to produce the final ready product of modifier. First, is the powder form or granules or pellet form where the size is reduced through the grinding process. For S4 additives, normally the preferred size is less than 1 mm. And for aggregate replacement, the size normally preferred is more than 1 mm. Then, the modifier can also be in the form of liquid or oil, which can be obtained through various processes, including pyrolysis and hydrothermal liquefaction. This is normally used as additives in S4. For pyrolysis, it involves the process of decomposition of organic material at high temperatures in the absence of oxygen. It applies to dry biomass and then converted into bio oil. And for hydrothermal liquefaction, the process involves thermal depolymerization which apply wet biomass for the conversion into liquefied product or bio oil. The process needs catalyst run at moderate temperature under high pressure. Okay, this is an example of the conversion of waste tires into oil through pyrolysis and in a form of pellets or powder through grinding method. For example, any alternative materials used as aggregates in the asphalt mixture should have the following characteristics. First, the specified alternative aggregates should comply in terms of technical requirements with relevant test methods such as for the geometric, physical and mechanical, chemical and also thermal and weathering. And then, subject to the same requirements or greater than the virgin aggregates, meaning whether they are able to perform better than the conventional aggregates. And finally, to benchmark the quality of the alternatives aggregate with the quarrying industry. Let's have a look on different types of modifier available for asphalt modification. Some of them used as alternative aggregate and some as additives and asphalt binder. The table shows different types of modifier, their general purposes and example, which include filler, extender, different types of rubber, plastic, and fiber. Do spend some time to read the details provided in the table. Then, in this table, we have oxidant, antioxidant, hydrocarbon, anti-stripping agents, and waste materials. All the purpose of modification seems relevant to what we have discussed earlier in the previous slide. Therefore, proper selection of the modifier is very important in modification, which depends on the target problem to be solved the nature, properties, and availability of the material selected and methods to be used. Okay, let's have a look on example of modification using wet and dry process. It should be noted that the videos are used only for the purpose of education and the credit goes to the YouTube videos with the link provided in the slide. First, let's have a look on the chrome rubber modified asphalt which make use the wet process for the modification. Scrap tires are one of the world's most troublesome solid waste problems. Every year some 300 million pile up in the U.S. alone. Besides their sheer volume, the bulky discards present many problems in local landfills, creating a global challenge. Many end up in giant tire pods. In the U.S., there are more than two billion tires piled up around the country, making them one of the most serious solid waste problems ever encountered. The piles are not only an eyesore, 
they are an environmental nightmare. Dozens of these piles have caught fire, and since each tire contains at least one gallon of oil, the fires are almost impossible to extinguish. Some have burned for months, sending massive amounts of black smoke and dangerous particulate matter into the atmosphere, as well as contaminating groundwater. But this dilemma has a happy ending thanks to the work of Charles McDonald, a former Phoenix City engineer. In the 1960s, he developed a way of blending scrap tire rubber with asphalt to create an improved paving material that is now known as asphalt rubber and the subject of a standard from the American Society of Testing Materials. 30 years of laboratory and field testing has proven that his way of adding crumb rubber from old tires to conventional asphalt cement produces a pavement that lasts much longer. And that added durability is just one of the benefits of this remarkable paving material. The advantage of asphalt rubber is its ability to provide a firm highway surface while remaining flexible in all climates. It provides a resistance to cracking that can double pavement life while reducing traffic noise and increasing tire traction for better safety and it puts millions of scrap tires back to work. They are being diverted from landfills and tire piles for processing at plants like this. The steel is removed and the rubber is chopped and ground into a fine granular material called crumb rubber, which is shipped to asphalt construction plants in large sacks. There, the crumb rubber is blended with asphalt cement under a time and temperature formula inside a large tank. It takes about an hour for the rubber to react with the asphalt to form an asphalt rubber binder. To qualify, according to the established ASTM standard, the blend must contain at least 15% rubber by weight, and the rubber must react with a hot asphalt enough to cause the rubber particles to swell. Standard practices of 20% plus or minus 2 of rubber produces optimum physical properties. The binder is tested in the field to meet specifications. It can be used as a spray applied membrane or mixed with aggregate and sand to create an asphalt rubber hot mix. As a spray applied membrane, it can be used for chip seals or interlayers to reduce reflective cracking. As a hot mix, it is placed with a paving machine, just like conventional asphalt, and transferred into pavers for application to the road surface and rolled smooth. Next is the steel slag modified asphalt that is produced using the dry process. Carbon steel slag an excellent raw material for road construction projects. Limited sources of raw materials on the one hand and the production of large quantities of various types of industrial waste on the other hand mean that we will have to change our patterns of thinking and behavior in the field. Waste of all kinds has become an important source of new raw materials and its use is particularly promising in the field of civil engineering where large quantities can be used. New composites made from waste can frequently have better characteristics and can be cheaper to produce than traditional products and, apart from hazardous components in the waste, can be immobilized. Among the most usable types of waste, which are well known in the civil engineering industry and already used routinely, are various types of slag and, in particular, slag from electric arc furnaces, which is a byproduct from the carbon steel production process. The raw material for the production of carbon steel is waste iron, to which hydrated lime is added. The slag is created on the surface of the molten steel at a furnace temperature of about 1600 degrees centigrade and is run off into a pit which is located beneath the furnace. About 150 kilograms of slag is produced for every ton of steel that is made. Beneath the furnace, the slag starts to harden. It is then mixed using special excavators, loaded onto lorries and transported to a waste depot, which is in the vicinity of the steelworks. Here, the first stage of the aging of the slag takes place, which consists of two weeks of wetting and mixing. 
In this way, the slack cools down slowly and in a controlled fashion, and its suitable microstructure is achieved. A transition of the unstable minerals into stable forms also takes place. The cold slag is then moved to a more distant waste depot where it is left to age for a further 30 days. The method by which aggregate is obtained from slag is similar to the method for obtaining aggregate from natural stone materials. Two stages of crushing are needed, the difference between them being that the slag goes through a separate process of magnetic separation where iron is removed in two stages. The crushed material is then sieved on standard sieves in order to obtain different sizes of granulations. The characteristics of aggregate made of slag are verified in accordance with the requirements of the technical standards for aggregates which were prepared for professional use at the EU level and which Slovenia has officially adopted into its legislation. Its most important properties are grain size distribution as well as resistance to crushing, freezing, thawing, wear and polishing. In order to prevent the undesirable swelling of building composites containing slag, the volumetric stability of the slag is also verified by an expansion test. Chemical analysis of the leachates from the slag are also performed in order to check whether there is a danger of the release of heavy metals and thus also a detrimental effects on the environment. Results obtained so far indicate that this type of slag is not hazardous and that its use will not burden the environment. Asphalt is a very important material for the construction of roads. Asphalt mixes consist of approximately 95% of aggregate and 5% of bituminous binder. The input materials have to be suitably stored in the vicinity of the asphalt plant. The aggregate is transported by means of a conveyor belt from the depot to the drying drum, inside which it dries at a temperature of approximately 160 to 180 degrees centigrade. At the same time, it is heated up and dust is removed by means of filters. During the next stage, the aggregate is transported to a system of sieves, sieved into hoppers for hot fractions and weighed before entering the batch mixer. Asphalt mixtures produced in this way are then weighed into suitable lorries and then transported to the building site where they are to be placed. Here they are tipped into the asphalt paving machine and then mechanically spread onto the suitably prepared base. If the placed asphalt layer is to be of good quality, then it must be placed in as short a time as possible after production and such placing must be uninterrupted and uniform. In comparison with ordinary asphalt mixtures, the advantage of hot asphalt mixtures made from carbon steel slag lies in their better skid resistance. In other words, the road surface is somewhat rougher, which improves the safety of road users. Okay, that's all for asphalt modification concept. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video on various applications of modified asphalt. Assalamualaikum.